Hi guys, my name is Tomasz, but you can call me TSB. So recently the Zen 2 microarchitecture came out with the Ryzen 3000 series, and I figured that I'll update my processor again, so I went from my current AMD Ryzen 5 2600 to AMD Ryzen 5 2600. And uh, for the first time I figured out, hey, why not do some benchmarking to really have some objective number as to how much faster the new CPU really is compared to the old one, because I did not have like hard data for it. So I'll go straight to the charts and uh, I'll speak a little bit about the methodology and, and some general tips for updating my specific motherboard. So the most important thing for my testing was to pick really uh, scenarios where which I encounter in real world and uh, I didn't want to have some uh, arbitrary benchmarks that I that don't res don't reflect my real world usage so that's why I chose a few games that I have played slash I play and a uh, couple utilities that I use on a regular basis on my PC uh, first one is um, Assassin's Creed Origins really nice benchmark uh, then PowerDirector 17, here I rendered uh, my last uh, review that I did for 911 Operator. Then Car Mechanic Simulator 2018, this has a really nice benchmark again. OpenSCAD is a modeling tool I, I use for uh, my 3D printing hobby. And the Rise of the Tomb Raider again. I completed this game and I have a full let's play on YouTube uh, from this one and it has a nice comprehensive benchmark as well. I'll just show all the results uh, for the 2600. I use the values captured on the 2600 as the baseline for the comparisons uh, with the 3600. So as we go to the 3600, the uh, first one is uh, Assassin's Creed Origins really likes the, the frequency uplift that we get. And roughly we have a 300 to 350 MHz uplift, uh, all core on the CPU frequency, and this is all stock, I don't see anything. Then uh, move on to the Power Director. I expected some games in Power Director 17, but uh, it seems that the frequency uplift was not something that the Power Director liked. Uh, next up we have Car Mechanic Simulator, um, very minute uplift. I would say that I'm already uh, GPU constrained and uh, I could see that, that this game is not that well optimized as uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. OpenSCAD really, really likes the frequency uplift the 3600 provides. We have a 12% uplift in uh, performance. Rise of the Tomb Raider, similarly to Assassin's Creed Origins, uh, shows an improved performance with the uh, improved frequency. So, these are the base row numbers. After I completed this round of testing, I realized that, hey, I have a, I have a memory kit which was really unstable at the launch of the whole platform, because I originally started with a 1600, and I really wasn't able to hit even with XMP profiles turned on even the 3000 MHz frequency and I just left it to be I didn't really have the patience for it that uh, the memory was memory overclocking was really finicky uh, with the with the early BIOSes but I figured that hey I'll I'll try the XMP profiles this time around and uh, it's a huge boost in frequency because uh, you are moving from the base JDAC uh, spec of 2400 megahertz to 3200 megahertz uh, for this specific kit and uh, it turned out to be rock solid so i did another round of benchmarking with the increased uh, ram frequency uh, so that you could see whether this gives you an uplift in performance as well First up, Assassin's Creed Origins still showed some improvement. Uh, we really had the tight error margin on this one, so I can certainly say that uh, we get another almost 2% of performance uplift here. This was a huge surprise for me. PowerDirector 17 just loves the memory frequency, so if you are working in this, don't hesitate and get the fastest memory kit you can because it showed an improvement of 13%. Car Mechanic Simulator 2018 don't, doesn't really care very much and we are within error margins. 
as far as the previous results go with uh, with the 2400 megahertz so uh, this one is really gpu limited open uh really the same result the error margins are kind of big for this one so i would say that this is the same result as uh, with the 2400 megahertz on the memory part and Tomb, Rise of the Tomb Raider still showed a similar uplift to Assassin's Creed Origins, so we have like a 2 to 2.5% uplift. So I'm going to talk about the methodology a little bit. So first off, uh, I did four runs uh, within a very similar environment uh, as far as temperatures goes. I have a Clear Master Master Case H500P Mesh White Case. Uh, which was closed up, closed up for the for the entirety of the test round. So I, I try to have as similar conditions as possible. Apart from the CPU, nothing else was changed within the case. I had the same peripherals uh, hooked up, uh, same graphics card, uh, same memory, except of the frequency, as noted for the later cases. The little purple bars as shown on the graphs are the is the standard deviation as calculated for the from the four runs and I use the average number uh, within the bar graphs. For the cooling of the CPU, I use an uh, Noctua C12B uh, air cooler, and uh, I would have used a different power cooler, but at the time with, the, with my old case, I was uh, height limited uh, on the cooler I could use, so I used this one and uh, one of the quiet configurations. As a graphics card, I use uh, I currently use an NVIDIA GeForce 1660 Ti. Uh, these results were obtained with uh, no OC on the CPU, GPU, anything else. So the only only OC uh, that was done was on the memory for the third set of results. I have a few tips for you as well. So as part of the upgrade, if you are the same as me, that uh, you're coming from an older version of the CPU, I was using, I think, uh, BIOS version F23, and the latest one is F42A. To get support for the 3000 series, you need to, to get at least F40, and uh, the upgrade process is not straightforward because uh, to get F40, you need to upgrade to F31 first then upgrade to F40 and I figured that, you know, if I'm already updating the BIOS, I'm going to go to the latest version at the time of the update, as I always do. Uh, found it a little bit funny that it actually, the latest version had like improvements in Destiny 2 gaming compatibility, which I found really funny. Uh, anyway, uh, the important note is that uh, you have to uh, not only install or flash F31 first uh, before uh, going to a later version, uh, but also uh, you have to install a specific firmware update tool uh, to avoid some compatibility problems. Be aware that uh, before installing this tool that in my case, after I installed it in uh, one or two minutes, uh, the PC just turned off for no apparent reason. The installation of the firmware update tool succeeded and went just fine, so I was a little bit left about why did it turn the PC off. Uh, I rebooted perfectly fine with, uh, with the 2600 and uh, then I went on to, to flash the BIOSes uh, from F23 to F31 then to F40, then to F42A, which is the BIOS I currently have. So just be aware that it's it's not as straightforward as previously, and you have to do uh, two, three steps in addition to just a regular flash. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, feedback is always appreciated. Leave yours down below, then hammer that subscribe button. This is TSB, signing out. Bye.